Welcome to another edition of uh, Inside Stuff with me, Martins Oloja. Today, we will continue with um, the topic of last week. I said last week, stop serving the God of small things. Actually, I was talking about the fact that it is time to serve the God of big things. So in this second edition, I would like to try to eat again. Let's serve the God of big things, part two. What, I, what do I mean here? I believe that um, the God we serve is the God of knowledge. And uh, he is a big God and he does big things. And we are a big country in a big continent like Africa. And uh, it's associated with us that uh, if we do not think big and do big things, we will not be able to lead the black race. Therefore, we want to continue to advise our leaders to think big and invest big in those things that will make us to actually be big in all facets, in not just uh, in name, not in the way we speak, but in the way we do things. We don't want to be great talkers and little doers, as uh, Benjamin Franklin has said. I believe that uh, we should begin to invest in the source of knowledge, to invest robustly in education. Education is the only way we can develop and serve the God of big things. The God of big things, really, would like us to invest in education advancement of knowledge, knowledge that will enable us to produce more engineers. We are credited with having very many educated people, even in the Western world, but they are not here. They are in another part of the world. Yes, they have doctoral degrees, they have master's degrees, they have all sorts of things. We have the best engineers, we have the best doctors, we have this, we have that. But here at home, we remain very small. People are going abroad. After investing in people here, in medical doctors, after subsidizing medical education, after subsidizing so many things, the experts go abroad because there is nothing to work for at home, because we still believe in serving the God of small things. Small things all over the place and nothing to wait for in 21st century. So in this age of digital technologies, our leaders should know that there should be a national development plan that will fund education in a robust manner to enable us to produce engineers that can serve us in 21st century, to produce medical doctors that will be able to find facilities to work at home. To produce this, we need to invest in STEM subjects, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics subjects. Basic and uh, secondary education should first start. There should be a national development plan that will enable us to fund education. That is what will make the difference. Country and uh, global competitiveness will depend on what we have invested in education. Producing graduates, producing technology experts, producing scientists that will showcase to the world that we are really the leader of the black race. I think that is what we need to do. And this is an opportunity to appeal to our leaders in the northern part of this country that uh, there is a time for everything. They should look at our, our brothers and sisters in the Middle East, who even uh, Islamic countries, in Arab countries, Middle East, and even some uh, people of North Africa, they are investing heavily in education. They have invested heavily in everything that will make them big. And as I said, those people serve the God of big things and they think big. They invest robustly in education, quality in education, which is what makes the difference after all. If we do not invest heavily in education, we won't have good people in 21st century, well-educated people, engineers, and all sorts of people that we need. And it begins with investing in even teachers. People who serve the God of big things invest in these things. That is why I said earlier, our brothers and sisters in the North should begin to see that they build more schools than mosques. It's not an insult. It is just speaking truth to power 
the power in the north. The, the immediate past minister of education referred to this a few days before leaving office, appealing to people in his own home state to continue to uh, uh, build more schools. They need to build more schools. They need to put more children into schools and ensure that they fund these things so that they have free and compulsory primary and secondary education. As uh, the immediate past governor of Kano State launched this, I was there and they invited people and Saudi uh, leaders and some leaders of the Middle East who were part of that ceremony where the emphasis was on compulsory, basic, and secondary education. And I think that is what leaders in the northern part of the country should do. They should invest heavily. That is how to serve the God of big things. If we can do this thing, we will be proud as servants of the God of big things at this time. And that is where we should begin to talk to our people. Investment in quality in education. That is why in South Africa and some other countries you see when there is a global rating of where we are at tertiary level, you see that the, the, uh, the, the, the best 10 universities in Africa, most of the time, seven to eight of them come from a particular country in the southern part, specifically South Africa. And that is why you see South Africa is a member of G20. We are not. South Africa is a member of BRICS. We are struggling to join these two bodies because of the way we are. So if we want to serve the God of big things, we should invest robustly in education, not just to be talking about 25% that may not even come out. That we must be deliberate about it if we do not want to continue to serve the God of small things. Until we meet again next week, uh, it is me, Martins Ologia.